One thing I've always wanted to try making in Besiege is some kind of boat, but there isn't any water in the base game, so I had to get a little more creative. Now I headed over to the workshop and I installed a water mod that floods the entire map, and with this, I thought it'd be fun to try to make a functional aircraft carrier. And of course, just testing this out right now, you can see the starting cube is really bouncing out of the water, so there seems to be a good amount of buoyancy. Now I wanted to add on some extra logs here and built up a basic raft for testing. The game didn't really seem to like this though, so with some extra after bracing, everything did seem to hold together, and I was able to move this across the water pretty well. Now for some automatic control here, I added on a log, and you can see in the water, I added on a wheel with four propeller blades. Now spinning this up, you can see I'm getting right around 14 meters per second, and overall, this seemed like it was going to be a really good way to move around the carrier. Now oddly though, I was also able to flip this over, and you can see with the propeller blades in the air, I was moving around 16 meters per second, so it seems like having the propellers in the water doesn't really do that much. I'll have to keep that in mind. Mind, but you can see next here, I'm expanding out my raft and I'm making it into a very long runway. Now, while the edges of this seem to have some problems, otherwise it was working pretty well, and you can see I got rid of the water, I deleted off the runway, and what I'm actually doing first here is building a plane. Now, I am going to need something to land on the carrier, so you can see starting out, I put down a flying block and I put that on some logs. Now, eventually I put a few more down, and my plan was to make an engine with just these flying blocks. Now, these do have a crazy amount of power, but it was also a little boring, and I wanted to try doing something a little more exciting. Now for that, I turn on infinite ammo, and you can see my cannon engine here does have quite a bit of power. Now once I saw that, you can see I put down some more logs here, and after that, I covered the engines with surface panels. Giving this a test though, the engines were so powerful, they seemed to just break straight out of this and just fly away. Now I was assuming that the problem was that the engines were putting too much force on the body, so I added on a spring to dampen their acceleration. This seemed to help out quite a bit here and was able to skid across the ground for a while before anything broke. Now I added on another spring here to dampen it even more and after that I also added on some front wheels. This honestly wasn't too bad at all and after adding on some front wheels here it was moving across the ground really well. Now I also added on a timer block here and this automatically fires off the cannons at a set interval so I don't have to keep spamming the fire key. Now with that I also added on some wing panels here and I wanted to see if this would be able to get off the ground. Now one optimization I really realized though was that instead of having all the cannons fire at once, I could use a series of timers to have them fire at different times. This averages out their power output a lot more and it means that there's a lot less stress on the body. This actually let me get off the ground here and it was not looking too bad at all. Now it wasn't perfect though and it still would fall apart, so what I wanted to do next was delete off the body and make a brand new one out of these surface panels. These of course are going to look a lot better, but they also should be a little more rigid and once I had something very basically shaped here. I also made a wing panel and you can see I copied it to the other side. Now after that I also copied it up and created a little cavity in the middle of the wing and I'll put some actual wing panels in there. And with that of course I had to brace up all of the center ballasts and after that I added on a few last panels here for the main body. Now once I had that done I also added on some more panels for the nose here and you can see I'm trying to shape a basic cockpit. This was a little more difficult than I thought it was going to be but with not too much trouble I was able to get that all on there and after that I put down some sticks and you can see I put down some landing gear. And before I go in for a full test, the last thing I need to add here are some control surfaces and you can see I'm doing that now when I'm trying to use some panels. Now these looked good, but they were having a lot of trouble moving up and down and I can see that a lot of things were bending quite weirdly. Now I deleted off those panels and you can see next I'm instead using wings and I'm shrinking them down a lot. This shouldn't affect their aerodynamic abilities, but it does let them blend in a lot more and finally with that I replaced all of the landing gear so it had suspension. After adding some glass to the cockpit and painting the whole thing orange, I wanted to give it a test. Now trying to take off, it does need a little help to get off the ground, but I was actually okay with that because getting off the carrier is going to get a little assistance. Otherwise though, it was flying really well and it seemed to be super maneuverable, which should be good for trying to land back on the carrier. But of course now, it's time to add back in the water and you can see here, I'm starting out by trying to build a platform again. This time though, I wanted to use as few wood blocks as possible to keep the lag down, so you can see what I'm doing is adding on a few at the corners and making this large panel. Now, trying this out at first, it seemed to be floating super well here, but that's when I had realized I turned off collision. Now, of course, the plane isn't going to be able to land on this if it doesn't have collision, but also doing that removes most of its mass. Adding this back in, it was suddenly a lot heavier, and I needed a way to get this out of the water. Now, the easiest 
easiest thing I could think of was adding some hot air balloon blocks and trying this out. This didn't really seem to work though, and the balloon still sunk all the way down. Now I thought that adding more might help, and I could see the side that had more balloons was more resistive to falling, but it still just went into the water and then fell right down. Now I figured that maybe I was gonna need a lot more logs here, so I added a bunch on the corners, but this really started to increase the lag, and I wasn't really happy to see that. Now my new idea was to delete off that panel I had, and you see I'm making one that's a lot smaller. The plane should be able to land on this, and you see now it actually is able to float. Now I moved the plane to the start of this runway, but since there's no support in the middle, it instantly broke the moment the plane got on it. Now to strengthen it, I added a spar in the middle, but this also didn't really seem to help, and the plane still fell right down. Now I realized there's really no way around it, and I am going to need to build a solid wood runway all the way through. I was trying to keep it as small as I could though to really push down the lag. Once I got this built here, it was actually floating and supporting the plane, but it was also super weak and kind of just pushed it right into the water. Now I added on a panel piece on top of the runway to hopefully strengthen it, and this seemed to help out a ton. The plane nearly took off and only seemed to reach trouble once it got near the end. This though was looking pretty good, and you see now I moved up the plane and I wanted to add on one more control that would make it easier to land. Now this is going to be the yaw control, and you can see to get this in place, I basically did the same thing I did for both the pitch and the roll controls. After getting those wings on there, I shrunk them down a ton, and with this, I wanted to try landing on the runway. This was very difficult, and trying Trying to get an approach here that didn't just smash into the top was taking me quite a while. I even tried extending out the deck of the boat here, and after quite a few tries, finally got the wheels on the surface, and while it did run off the end, nothing seemed to break, so at the very least, it seemed like it was going to be able to take the force. To successfully take off though, I was going to need to raise up the runway, and for that, you can see I moved up the deck. And after that, I also extended out the bottom, and I used a larger piece in the bottom to hold it all together. This had some minor problems, but at the very very least, it sort of seemed to be working, so after extending at the top of the carrier, I tried to use some panels to support the entire thing. This added a considerable amount of mass, though, and now it was just falling straight into the ground. Now, I added more wood logs, and I tried to also use some better support pieces, and with this, it actually was able to stay up above the water. This was a good sign, but it also would sometimes capsize like this, which I wasn't really happy to see. Now, adding in some spars like this seemed to help out the problem a lot, and with this, you see I put the plane back on it, but now it was a little heavy, and the plane is dipping right into the water. With a few more logs, though, I was getting pretty close, and you can see now I'm using my engine to try to take off. Unfortunately, though, the runway seemed to break in the middle, and I figured the problem was that it wasn't well supported enough, so to fix that, I added on a support right into the middle. Once I had this, I tried taking off again, but it still seemed to break on me, and I was kind of wondering what was going on. Now, I thought that maybe another support would fix the problem. Problem. So now I have four separate supported sections on this runway. This though still seemed to break on me, and I really wasn't getting anywhere. Now I was thinking that I probably just made this thing a lot bigger than it needed to be, and you can see now I deleted off the two center sections and shrunk it down a lot. Trying this out, you can still see it broke, and it wasn't until a little bit later when I finally realized the problem. The panels actually were strong enough to support the plane. The problem though is that the cannonballs were going into the deck of the runway and smashing it apart. With enough luck, eventually I was able to get the plane off the back of the runway and you can see now I successfully managed to take off and get above the water. To avoid the whole cannonball smashing up the runway problem though, what I wanted to try doing is moving this block to the middle of the end of the runway and you can see now I'm using a spring and I want to pull the plane off. But the springs were a little strong here and and seemed to just rip it apart. My next thought though is to use a rope and winch, and you can see my plan is just to slowly pull the plane off the edge. This was working, but it was a little on the slower side here, and I knew I was gonna need to speed up those ropes. Now I turned it up to 20 times speed, and given this a test now, it really seemed to be doing a lot better. This was actually not half bad, and assuming I get a way to fling off those ropes, I should be able to actually take off here. Now I basically just rebuilt what I had, but added in a grabber, 
and given this is test off the edge of the runway now, you can see I was able to take off here, throw off the rope, and get off the ground. This mostly preserved the aircraft carrier, and I was starting to really get somewhere. This process had a lot of slow improvements, but overall, I was able to launch more and more without smashing apart the carrier. I even nearly landed the plane back on the runway. Now, I tried moving the grabbers to the back wheels of the plane, which didn't really go so well, but after moving them to the front here, they were able to fall off a lot easier, and this meant that I was getting significantly more consistent takeoffs. Now, I realized I had all this extra space at the bottom of the carrier, and I thought about adding a second plane. I wasn't going to be able to pilot both at the same time, but I thought that I might as well try to add it in and see if I could wheel it out and get it on the runway. To start out here, I used a lot of decouplers, and it seemed using some ropes to pull it out. After that, I added a large wooden spar at the top, and I tried to brace it all together to be able to pull up the plane. This wasn't looking too badly here, and Ixi was able to start getting it up and nearly on the runway. Now, finally, I pretty much just had to add in one more rope to the front, and with that, I wanted to try giving this a test. Now, this actually was pretty cool, but it also was adding a lot of lag, and I figured that I could spend these blocks in a way to actually get the first plane to land on the runway a lot more consistently. Now, to build up a better landing system here, you can see I added in a couple of ballasts, and after I did that, I braced them to the bottom of the carrier. Now, these are going to be very important points, because on them, I'm adding some hinges, and you can see I'm putting down some suspension. The plan is to have the plane go into the suspension, bend it forward, and slow down as it does that. Now, you can see here, I'm able to move these down and start to get in the way of the landing gear. To finish it off, though, I added a couple more pieces, and I also added a grabber. This is going to latch onto the other side and make sure there's a solid connection between the two. This honestly seemed to be working pretty well, and finally with this, I wanted to try going for a landing test. Now, starting off here, you can see I did get off the runway pretty well, and while I was getting a little close to the water, I was able to stay out, and I started to circle around. Now, at this point, my plan was to fly way past the carrier, do a U-turn, and then try to find my way back onto the runway. The problem, though, is that I had no actual markers for where it was, so I ended up losing it, and I came in at a very incorrect angle. So, going in for take two here, you can see I once again deployed off the carrier. This time, I was a lot further out from the water, and I did the same thing where I circled around and tried to find it. One interesting thing about this plane is since it shoots cannonballs, every second that it's running, it's adding more and more lag, and you can definitely see that as I start to come in for a landing. And while I did manage to mostly go over those springs, I fell into a piece that had no collision, and with this, I technically did stop without breaking anything. That took a lot longer than I thought it was going to, and landing back on a very narrow runway is extremely difficult. Before I wrap up, though, I also wanted to come back here and add on the island. This is going to serve absolutely no purpose and is probably going to get in the way more often than not, but it does look cool, so I figured it'd be important to add on. Now, for finishing up that basic shape here, the last thing I needed to do was color everything in. Now, I used a couple of custom texture packs off the workshop, and you can see now, I actually got a look that I thought was pretty solid. Now, overall, while it would have been nice to store a lot more planes in the bottom of this, I'm just glad I am able to land back on the surface and actually do a full flight. But now that I got this water mod installed, if you guys have any more boat ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Now, also make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.